his dribbling of type B. So that's unfortunate for Lida. Uh, he's got decent positioning of that uh, medic, but he's, of that marine, but he's going to lose uh, his force nonetheless. But now Lida's got a decent sized ground force ready to make that push. But type B has got a good amount of lurker spread across the map, and he could potentially get a flank in here. Lida still not with the science vessel out, uh, and he's lost his first dropship as well. Lurkers go down, lots of lurkers. There are about seven or eight lurkers there. Uh, type B needs to be careful. He needs to keep his lurkers alive. I think he's still a little bit away from getting defilers. Uh, so that's uh, clearly something he has to worry about. And type B brilliantly maneuvering some lurkers back, keeping some others on the side. And uh, obviously now it's down to the Zerg clear to solve. And he's only now uh, taking to high. We, we do know that his third hatchet is quite late going up. So he did a good job of pressuring Type B in that position. I feel the game is fairly evenly balanced. I still think anyone can take this game right now. I, I did think wrongly that Type B might try to make a switch to Mutalix. But obviously that wasn't on the cards because he was spending all his gas on lurkers. And it just wasn't going to be efficient for him to do that. So he's going to have to rely on lurker link. A little bit old style Zerg uh, from Type B. Now the science vessel out for um, Lida. And Type B could be in a little bit of trouble. Type B with a lot of lurkers trying to get a flank off. That science vessel gets picked off. Brilliant micro by Type B to take the science vessel off. But so many lurkers. One sea shack goes down. Second sea shack is definitely going to go down as well. Loses a bunch of American Marines as well. He's lost a couple of lurkers in the process. But clearly, uh, the key thing is that he killed the science vessel as well as two of the sea shacks. That third sea shack is probably going to go down as well. He's lost most of his American Marine force. And Type B is going to be very happy with that result there, even though he lost a good amount of his lurkers in the process. But he's still got a very large lurker force there. And Type B has amassed a huge amount of lurkers. And you feel that Type B might take this first game off the set between these two players. So uh, Type B doing a good job. And again, I've, I've said it to you guys before, I feel that Outsider is really a map that is such a strong map for Zerg players because you can just get that gas up and it's very difficult for the Terran player to press them. Obviously Lida, going for that 8 racks build, did commit himself to try and put some pressure on the Zerg player earlier and then wasn't able to, then tried the tricks with the, with the factory. Uh, but you've got to give a lot of credit to Type B because he's been one step ahead of Lida the entire game thus far. He's read every single move that Lida's tried to pull off and he's countered it brilliantly. Lida now with the second science vessel out. Uh, but again, and that was that was the difference, I feel, between a, a Zerg player who's going to challenge for something, who's going to be able to progress to the latter stages, and one who isn't. A Zerg player who can anticipate his opponent's tricks and counter them. A Zerg player, especially, who can pick off those dropships and science vessels with those scourges. Uh, so far, he's only wasted two scourges, uh, and he's done a great job of picking them. And it's all about the timing of getting those scourges in as the medic and marines are busy attacking your other units. Uh, Type B does have decent defenses at that 9 o'clock base, and he's got a couple of sunken and a couple of uh, lurkers, so that dropship isn't going to do any damage. And that dropship gets picked off as well. Fantastic play by Type B. Really good. Takes the dropship down with the scourges. Uh, and Lida is just starting to run out of ideas right now. Uh, he's lost two dropships. Done pretty much no damage from them. Those two marines that he dropped aren't going to be able to do any damage. Uh, they're just going to get taken down by the sunken. Now he's managed to get within range of the drone. He's going to kill one drone. Uh, but he's going to get cleaned out by those Zerglings. And uh, Type B's also got a Nidus Canal up there as well. And, you feel and another science vessel is about to get sniped. And careless by Lida. I'm not sure if it's Type B who's microing brilliantly here. Uh, or if it's just Lita who's being careless. But Type B has killed two dropships and three science vessels already of Lita's. And Lita's in not a good position at all. Type B with his hive up. He's going to have that. He has the defiler mount up. And he's got his defilers out. It's only a matter of time before that consume is ready. Uh, and once that's ready. And Lita, unfortunately, has also been bleeding his army. He hasn't been able to put that pressure on Type B. Uh, and you've got to say that. I feel that Lida hasn't played badly. He's tried something different. He's tried different strategies. He's tried to catch his opponent off guard. Uh, tried to take him down. Uh, and Lida now doesn't seem to be able to irradiate that defiler. He needs to irradiate that defiler. He's finally got there irradiated on that defiler. Uh, but it's, it's a little bit too late because that defiler is going to be able to close in range of his main forces. Uh, and he's going to be able to close in. He's got one swarm up. Second swarm goes up. But that swarm isn't really in range. Lida's tanks weren't sieged luckily for him. So he's just able to maneuver away from that swarm. And Type B is just going to lose a couple of zerbings in the process. But Type B is in a very strong position right now. He's also taken that double gas. Uh, and he's also now taking the natural expo of the 9 o'clock base. Uh, Lida's going to probably put pay to that. He's probably going to, I don't think Type B's going to be able to hold this expo. That defiler being used a little bit carelessly by Type B and he's forced to cancel that natural expo. But he should be able to hold this high ground here. Uh, meanwhile, Lida has taken his min only expo at the 12 o'clock base. And yeah, Type B again with the swarm on top of that choke. It's going to be incredibly difficult for Lida to get up there with those lurkers in position. So Lida's going to have to back off. His tanks are unseaged and he's going to back off. But the, the only chance, I think Lida might have one small chance if he can keep that force alive and try to amass a few science forces and keep irradiating. The problem is that he's lost too many science already uh, and he's going to have his reinforcements in the middle of the map caught uh, by Type B's forces that one C-Shank is going to take, get taken out as well as that small group of American Marines so uh, Lida is isolated his main army is isolated from reinforcements and you feel that Type B is really running away with the game his economy is ballooning uh, and Lida once again losing another science vessel to those scourges perfect perfect scourge play this is reminiscent of Savior and his prime in terms of scourge play uh, and really uh, I'm very impressed by Type B in this game uh, and you know uh, Molchop and I were talking about this game earlier today uh, about Lida versus 
is Type B saying that this was going to be a test for both of these players, especially for Type B, because Lita obviously has a slightly uh, bigger reputation to uphold. Of course, this is being played on Outsider, so you, I don't think you can really make a judgment of a player's Zerg versus Terran skill on Outsider, because I do feel that Outsider has started to become a little bit easy mode for Zerg players, especially if they can get that drone scout out in the correct direction. Now that hatchery up at the double gas for Type B, uh, if he wasn't running away with the game already, Lita dropping on that ridge a couple of siege tanks from his dropship, a uh, siege tank and a couple of marines to support it with that dropship, but I feel that it's not really going to be enough to do too much, just uh, going to be able to siege that natural expo, but Type B has just got so many units and so many forces in here, uh, and again, that science vessel uh, is not able to get in range to irritate those defilers because it's shielded by the scourges, so a Type B doing a good job of doing that, Lita unfortunately doesn't have the science vessels to throw away, he's, he's only got the one science vessel, so he's not been allowed to amass science vessels at all, D Matrix on that marine to absorb some lurker hits, but Type B is going to come in with a flank here with the lurkers as well, that science vessel, and again, perfect, Type B using only two scourges on that science vessel, I think he lost a third scourge just uh, in, the, in general, but he only actually attacked that science vessel with two scourges, so Type B is doing a great job here, I feel, against Lita, uh, and Lita with that siege tank on that high ground, Type B obviously needs to do something about that, he doesn't have any, any mutilus right now, he perhaps needs a few mutilus to take that siege tank down, or he needs to research drop for his overlords, he doesn't even have speed upgrade on his overlords, so uh, that's not typically uh, text that you see from Zerg player versus Terran, especially unless, unless, they're, not, unless they're trying to play on a drop, obviously. So Type B just about to close this game out, I feel, very soon. Uh, he's got he's got map control, he's got bases, he's going all over the map. Lita, uh, his attacks have been thwarted. Uh, they've been uh, fended off and blunted quite effectively by Type B. Uh, and really, again, I feel Type B has been one step ahead this entire game. And yes, this is Outsider, a game that I, a map that I do feel does favor Zerg players. Um, I, I feel it's very hard for, for players to counter, counter the new Zerg strategy and a play going off on a lot of uh, Lita's Marines. That's going to hurt. He really cannot afford that right now. And even this uh, eco light SK Terran build struggles, especially if you can't keep those science vessels alive. Lita has now got two science vessels, but he's, he's lost at least four or five science vessels already this game. Uh, and, and that's a testament to Type B. So even though this is Outsider, I think uh, there are lots of good signs for Type B in here. The way that he's anticipated his opponent's maneuvers and counters to what he's doing, uh, the way he scout did, got that drone scout out early, uh, Type B now coming in, and he's again going to take the siege tanks that were protecting that siege tank up on that ridge. Uh, and Lita just doesn't have the forces to fight here. Unfortunately, Type B doesn't have the scourges to follow up to, to polish off the science vessels as he's been doing throughout the game. Uh, but at this stage, I feel he's got such overwhelming economy uh, that Lita is just about to be overrun. Uh, and I, I just don't don't see what Lita can do right now to combat this. Um, this game is pretty much out of his hands, I feel. Uh, and that expansion is coming under a little bit fire of fire from that sea shank. And now uh, Lita coming in with two dropships. Lita, Lita, for his part, has really tried to do what he can, uh, but it just hasn't worked out for him. So yeah, as I was saying, Type B with some good Scourge Micro. Uh, and, and some good anticipation has, has really impressed me in this game thus far, and it'll be interesting to see how the rest of this set proceeds. I think it's a BO3, although it could be a BO5. I think the OSL quarterfinals are best of three matchups. So a win, even one win, is a huge deal uh, in the OSL. Uh, and now catching off those three science vessels with a plague from that defiler, uh, and that's not what Lita needed at all. Struggling desperately to get some sort of a foothold in this game, but he's just on the ice, and he's slipping and slipping, and the Antarctic Ocean is only a few feet away, uh, and Lita is just going to get completely frozen in there, uh, and that's not what he wants at all. Now Lita is able to get a group of decent group of American Marines in there, but uh, Defilers, Ultralists, and Lings waiting for him to welcome, to greet those troops as they arrive. Hello and die is what Zerg forces are saying to that group of American Marines, unfortunately for Lita. Lita coming in with about four or five science vessels, uh, trying to find things to irradiate, get, catching a Defiler, but the Defilers are always going to swarm up. And that's another good thing that Type B has done. Even when he's gotten his Defilers irradiated, he's always been able to have the awareness and the micro to get a couple of swarms up in the right areas uh, to make sure that Lita cannot take advantage of the fact that he's managed to irradiate those defilers. And uh, Lita, because Type B's economy has been so strong and so mushrooming, Lita has been forced uh, to put all the pressure on uh, and has and, and therefore Type B ha hasn't even had the usual conundrum and some decent spider mines uh, by Lita. Uh, but they're going to get taken down. They're not doing enough damage really to those Ultralists. And now Type B able to translate into that massive 20,000 gas, uh, 20,000 extractor Zerg build uh, that is so popular on Outsider. Uh, and really, Lita, now his natural expo coming under. And I was just going to say that, that Type B wasn't put in a position where he had to get that Defiler all the way from his natural expo to Lita's natural expo to put pressure on him because it was Lita who had to kind of try and stop the Zerg's economy from getting out of control. Uh, and so therefore, he didn't have to travel the whole map which limited the opportunities that the Terran player has for irradiating. Normally, the Zerg player has to fight and buy each inch of ground. That's what Flash does 
it did in his game, I believe, versus July in the GOM TV Intel Classic when uh, July had an advantage on Outsider, uh, but Flash just didn't let him get those defilers anywhere near his base, and he just defended and defended and defended. Perhaps that's the kind of strategy that Terran players would have to go for, although I think with the new builds against the top player, uh, top level Zerg is just not going to work out. So Type B is going to take this. Lita GG's. Well played by Type B. I think you can safely call that a comprehensive victory. Uh, and I feel this map is really a deathbed for Terrence. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see this map in the next season because I feel that it does really favor Zerg players. Uh, and Type B taking the first game against his teammate. And, um, you know, uh, it's, <laughs> it's probably not going to be pleasant in the high towers. I'm sure there will be some cold stairs exchanged. But uh, hopefully they can... And oh! Oh, great sportsmanship. The players walking over and uh, shaking hands. And, and you know what, guys? This is down to the Emperor Boxer. I'm sorry. I know I may be giving him too much credit. But when was the last time you saw a pro gamer shake hands until Boxer did it in the first game of the E-Stars Heritage League? It was Boxer who started this trend after he beat Reach. And now players are seeing that this is the manner way to behave. And I completely and utterly agree with it. Uh, and I'm glad to see some good sportsmanship. This is Class of Guys. Thanks for listening.